Hey guys, and welcome to Taylor Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at RAID array performance on FreeNAS servers. So after I did my FreeNAS build video, I started getting feedback in the comments section about uh, RAID arrays uh, that I should be considering, should be using for the best performance. Um, and some of them were some pretty non-traditional uh, topologies, at least they seemed like they were really different to me. So I decided I'd do some testing and see what actually gave me the best performance. So to do that, uh, I came up with six different topologies we're going to use. Um, I'm going to put a graphic of them up here so you can get a visual representation of what we're working with. Um, each of the arrays contains six disks. The white disks represent data disks. The red disks represent parity disks. And the colored boxes represent groupings of disks. Um, so what we've got is six disks just striped together. Um, so this is our should be our fastest performance array, um, but it has no redundancy. Next, we have a RAID Z1 array of all six disks. This gives us a little bit of parity, um, but pretty good performance. Then we have RAID Z2, which we expect is going to give us the best compromise between performance and parity. Uh, a RAID Z3 array, which would give us the best, uh, the best parity and the best redundancy, but also be the worst performing. Next, we have the community suggested configuration, which is two RAID Z1 arrays of three disks. Uh, which is supposed to give an even better performance than the, Z, the RAID Z2 configuration, um, although there is a cost to it that we'll discuss. Uh, and the final configuration is uh, three sets of mirrors striped together. Now, this is kind of a weird configuration, but I figured if the two uh, RAID Z1 arrays were better performing, then maybe three mirrors would be better performing. I ought to at least check it out for the sake of completeness. So something to consider when we're doing this test is we're, you know, we want to look at what the theoretical max performance is what the actual performance is in synthetics, and then what the actual performance is when doing real world file transfers, because synthetics, as we've seen, don't always represent the real world. Um, these disks that I've got in the FreeNAS box have a max sustained read and write of 159 megabytes per second. This is due to them being 5,900 uh, RPM disks. So, what we can do is we can look at the number of data disks that are in each of the configurations, and that should give us a rough idea of the max throughput we're going to get in each of these configurations on the theoretical side. Although you'll see as we go through and uh, do the testing that it does, the theory doesn't always hold up in practice. So for the setup for this test, what I did is I created a clean volume with a clean data set uh, before each test, and wiping everything out that was on the FreeNAS box to ensure that uh, it was consistent, at least, between all of the tests. Um, we used the 10 gigabit network, peer-to-peer uh, -peer network that we discussed in the previous video, so that we had no networking bottleneck. For the actual test itself, I used Crystal Disk Mark with a 4 gigabyte load um, to ensure that I wasn't just hitting the cache, and also uh, had a folder with 4 gigabytes of videos in it that I was copying back and forth between a RAM disk uh, drive on my PC and the FreeNAS box. Now, to ensure that I wasn't just caching the four gigabytes of videos, I did rename the folder each time so that it thought it was a different uh, object and would actually write it and actually read it from the disk. Okay, so let's look at the results. Um, you know, as expected, the synthetics didn't necessarily line up with the real world file copies. One thing that was really interesting is that while the reads didn't line up between the synthetic test and the real world test, the writes actually did line up fairly closely, um, usually within just 10 or 20 megabytes per second of each other, which uh, at the speeds we're talking about is close enough to be uh, pretty much identical. So when we look at the read performance, the stripe of the six, striping six disks together performed much worse in the real world than it did in the synthetics. Um, we got the expected result during the crystal disk test, but when actually fi copying files, it performed uh, quite a bit lower. Now the community suggested uh, two RAID Z1 arrays performed basically on par with the RAID Z2 array um, and was somewhat worse than what we expected. And it actually had the worst synthetic result out of all of the results. Now when we switch over to writes, overall the RAID Z array scores came down much lower than expected. Um, this is compared to all the other non-RAID Z results. In this situation, the community suggested two RAID Z1 arrays actually did amazingly well with very good write performance, almost the best of the bunch, only being beaten out by the stripe of uh, six disks. So what do we make of all of this? Well, in general, we did see the expected result of more parity uh, resulting in worse reads, and uh, 
which aligns with our theoretical expectations. Uh, the only one that really didn't pan out was uh, just striping all the discs together, which had much worse reads than we expected. So RAID Z performance overall came in much worse than expected, especially on writes. And when we look at the server telemetry, we can see that there may have been more going on than just disk performance that was limiting us. Uh, for most of the tests, the uh, CPU in the pre-NAS box was pegged out completely. And what I took this to mean is that I was exceeding the capacity of the CPU to keep up with the RAID array. So as you should know, the RAID Z functionality in FreeNAS is a software-based RAID, and all of the parity calculations are being done by the CPU. The fact that my CPU was pegged out was what was mo is most likely what was inhibiting the actual write performance and not any constraints on the disks of the network. You'll note from the overall graph that the two RAID Z1 configuration actually did better in writes than the single six-disk RAID Z1 configuration. Um, and what this points to is a simpler parity calculation being done for the two RAID Z1 disks where each of the, uh, the RAID Z1 arrays only had three disks and had a much simpler parity calculation, half the difficulty of the six disk RAID Z1 configuration. This is, that's gonna significantly reduce the bottleneck uh, on the CPU during writes. To improve the performance of this server, adding disks is not actually gonna help me. Um, what I really would need to do is remove the CPU bottleneck and ensure that I can um, utilize all the disks that are in there fully before I start adding other disks. But what we do have here actually is a strong case for a caching disks. So uh, one of the things you can do with a free NAS box is have a disk that is dedicated to caching incoming writes. It will also cache data to be read back at, if it thinks if the free NAS box thinks that it's going to be used in the near future. The way that free NAS is caching system is structured is kind of like a CPU with an L1 and an L2 cache where the RAM on the server acts as the L1 cache. It's the fastest cache um, for reading things back. And then you can add a caching disk is sort of like an L2 cache where it's a secondary cache um, that you can that things will be stored at when they're being written or uh, read back from if they're being used frequently and that it'll be much bigger than the system memory cache. So what are my final thoughts on what the best array type is uh, for my given situation? Well, as with all things, the best uh, option is strongly based upon what your use case is. In my current situation, I built this free NAS server for expanded storage, so having more physical storage than any one computer in my house had, um, being able to share that storage with multiple people, and having it be redundant in case a disk died so that I didn't lose anything that was on the box. Given my situation uh, in my specific use case, the RAID Z2 array uh, of six disks in a single RAID Z2 array is the best option. Every other computer in the house other than my workstation is connected by a gigabit network to this machine. Uh, so the only one who's going to see any bottleneck from any of these configurations is going to be me when I'm copying large files from my workstation. Um, people using the media center computer or a laptop on Wi-Fi will never even notice because they won't even come close to the actual throughput capacity of any of these array configurations. Also, something really important that you need to consider about the two RAID Z1 array configuration that the community suggested is that it actually has less parity than the... Uh, RAID Z2 configuration of six disks. And the reason for this is that that two, Z, that two RAID Z1 configuration is really akin to RAID 50 um, in that if you lose one of those RAID Z1 arrays, you lose all the data on the entire array. Um, and to lose data on one of the RAID Z1 arrays, you only have to lose two disks, right? Um, because there's one parity disk. So if one disk dies, you have the potential to lose the entire array if any other disk dies. Um, now you may get lucky and one, one disk dies in one array and one disk dies in the other array and it doesn't actually hurt you, but I would rather not risk it. It's not much of a performance hit to go with the RAID Z2. Um, and I feel more comfortable knowing that I have more redundancy in the case of a disk failure. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. This was my first time doing the benchmarking thing and seeing uh, how things performed um, and kind of putting those results together for you. So let me know what you thought of that. Uh, any comments or other suggestions you have, leave them in the comment section down below. I love interacting with you all. Um, if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by using the Amazon affiliate link in the description. Um, it really helps me when you do that. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Jack it up.